Inverse of powers and radicals. Well, let's focus on radicals first. Uh, a radical is half of a parabola when you graph it. Remember how we restricted the domain on our radicals to only just the right half or the positive half? So here we have half of a parabola. We're missing the bottom half of it. So it's already been restricted, so we don't need to restrict the domain on radicals. That goes for cube roots, fourth roots. Uh, they're not necessary to restrict the domains because they're already one-to-one -one functions. They pass, they're going to pass the vertical test. They're going to pass the horizontal test. So no restriction needed for radicals. So when we find the inverse of a radical, first thing we're going to do is, of course, switch our x and our y. We're going to get the root or radical by itself, either the square root or the cube root or fourth root, whatever root it is by itself. We'll raise both sides to the power of the index of the radical. So on this example down below, the index is a 3. We're going to raise it to the power of 3. We're going to get y by itself, and then we'll change y to f, f inverse of x. All right, so let's do an example down here. So the first step, switch your x and y. So x equals 2 cube root y minus 5 plus 6. We're going to get the radical by itself. So we're going to minus 6 on both sides. We're going to divide both sides by 2. Oh, I messed that up. Sorry, we are going to subtract 6 and then divide by 2. So let's see, we have this cube root of y minus 5 is equal to x take away 6 divided by 2. Uh, because we're to the third, third root, we're going to raise both sides to the third power. So now we have y take away 5, take away 5 is equal to this fraction x minus 6 divided by 2 cubed. And we add 5, we add 5, and change y to f inverse. So f inverse of x is equal to x minus 6 over 2 cubed plus 5. All right, this next one doesn't have an index, so whenever there's no index number, we know it's a square root. There's a little 2 there, even when it doesn't show up. First step, switch your x and y. We're going to get this square root by itself. Uh, we're going to add 3 to both sides. And dividing by 1 half is the same as timesing by 2. So we're going to times that by 2, times that side by 2. So I have 2 times x plus 3 is equal to the square root of y plus 8. Now we're going to take both sides and square it. <clears throat> Might be easier to just distribute this 2. So that's a 2x plus 6 equals the square root of y plus 8. We're going to square both sides. So y plus 8 is equal to 2x plus 6 squared. We minus 8 on both sides. And change your y to f inverse of x. And there's your inverse. Again, there's no restriction needed on radicals because they're already one-to-one. -one. Last one. Okay, so we're going to switch x and y. Get the radical or the cube root by itself. Let's see, we're going to add 1 to both sides. So I have x plus 1 equals negative cube root, oh, that's supposed to be a y. It's supposed to be a y in there, right? We switched our x and our y. 
Okay, I want to get that radical by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 1. I want to move that negative, so we're going to divide by a negative 1 on both sides, which basically just changes the signs on everything. So now you've got negative x minus 1 equals the cube root of y. We're going to raise both sides to the power of 3. And change your y to f inverse of x. Oftentimes you may see, that, and, and uh, you may not, but you may see on an answer key where they don't leave that negative inside. Uh, they may just put the negative on the outside, which is also fine. If you saw the, that they wrote f inverse of x is equal to negative, and put x plus 1 to the third power, that would be the same function. Both would be right. Um, my guess is if I pulled up the answer key on this one, it would probably be the second one that would be the answer. But I'll accept both um, on the written assignments. Just don't be surprised if they put the negative in front. That could certainly happen.